Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. It's a scripture that I found. It says, My son, give me thine heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. The first two words is a declaration of an acknowledgement. You are my son. That means on legitimate grounds, you qualify to be a partaker of everything that I have. My son, not a stranger, my son. Then give me your heart. There are not many times God demands things from men. But every time God does demand a thing from a man, it is because he's preparing him to receive something higher and greater. And he says, my son, you want to be used as a general to the nations. My daughter, my church, my territory. If you want to be mightily used by God, listen to me. The first key is not anointing. The first key is not fasting. The first key is not prayer. The first key is not Bible study. You can do all those things and yet miss it. Because many have tried it and it did not work. The first key to being mightily used by God is the state of your heart. The state of your heart vetoes your prayer life. The state of your heart vetoes your fasting. Every other thing finds its credence from the purity of your heart. Are we together? My son, I desire to use you, but the state of your heart. Do you know why God is always after the heart of men i will tell you why because in his design of man he created the heart of man to be able to host him and him alone and in that design whatever finds its way to your heart is your god please observe this your god is not what you worship your god is whatever finds a place in your heart it doesn't matter what you worship physically in the realm of the spirit they know what you bow to not by searching a deity they search your heart god designed the heart of a man to be the mirror of his allegiance whatever can have access to that holy of holies in your heart qualifies to be your god are we together so he created the heart of man to be able to host him and his purposes so when you sing and when you preach before heaven takes you seriously the word of god that is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart will have to vet the purity of your heart god does not just accept worship because it is melodious god does not my son give me your heart complete surrender please read with me if you can see it otherwise i'll just read it from here the bible says the heart is deceitful above all things stop before you understand this scripture you have to array the many things that can be deceptive one of the things that is deceptive is the serpent now the serpent was more your heart can deceive you into believing something that is not true the heart is deceitful above all things and the bible says the heart is desperately wicked oh god bless me and you will see what i will do for the kingdom and God says, I don't need to bless you to see it. I'm already seeing it now. Because you see, in God's realm, I hope you know that God, how do I say this now? God does not live in eternity. No. I hope you know eternity is also a function of time. Eternity just means time without end. It's a summation of infinite dispensations, but it's still subject to time. God's realm is not in time, God's realm is not even in eternity. God's realm is not even heaven. He just put his throne there. Read your Bible. It says in the beginning God created. That means he was not there. You can't create what you are inside. In the beginning, where was he? He created the heavens and the earth. That means he was, he was in neither of the places. The realm of God is called light. It's a realm that the Bible says is unapproachable light. Now, please understand this. 
in that realm there is no time and there is no distance in that realm there is no future and there is no past those realities don't exist in that realm everything is called now so your tomorrow is seen already are, are, are you together now now you see in this realm you don't know what i can become tomorrow i may be broke today and so my being well behaved may not be a true picture of my heart condition it's just that the situation has forced me to carry a posture of humility so men can call you humble until the day you see the heart of man hides evil like a dna it does not be, it does not get activated until the conditions there are sufficient conditions that make certain levels of evil to be activated if you have never tasted fame you may not know that you can be derailed so you can just say god forbid i love god with all my heart remember you've never been honored you've never stood before kings this is why criticizing people is dangerous when you hear that someone is not doing well go back to your own altar and say god before i disgrace myself vet my heart now search my heart try my thoughts let me tell you this listen to my message why revivals die there is only one reason why revivals die not sin no the humanity of men is the reason why revivals die revivals die because the custodian of that revival is a man and satan knows that there is something in a man prophet isaiah began to observe it and he says has thou not known has thou not seen he says the everlasting god the lord creator of the ends of the earth does not faint neither is he weary this is a quality that is prevalent with men satan knows that no matter how powerful i am i will be tired one day he knows that so when he tries to attack your vision from the beginning and it does not work he will leave you you will think you are free he left jesus for a while he waited till they offended him till jesus was on his way to the cross here he comes again satan is any other thing but a fool he has an advantage of time. The Bible calls him that old serpent. He has lived through dispensation and he has studied man like an experiment. He knows man in and out. So when he sees you as a preacher with your zeal, he knows there is no money in your pocket yet. You've never flown a first class. You don't know what it means to be honored. So you don't even have any ego to be stung. So you think you are humble and Satan waits for you at the corridor of your lifting. He knows there is something with men that both glory and shame produces the same result. It can frustrate you. Are we together? Yes. so the day you lead the prayer and mighty things begin to happen do you know alexander the way the first time they called him elijah he rebuked them he said no i can't be elijah this humility but over time he thought to himself and said but honestly come to think of it who else because at that time there was no internet you will not even know god is also walking at the other side of your ignorance God knows men very well. That's why he does not trust what you say till he sees what is in your heart. Have you not seen men who say, I will stand with you forever. I will build maybe a ministry or I will be with you in politics. I must vote you. And while they are saying that quarter to, their, to when you will need them, they will change. God knows the ever-changing nature of men. So he does not trust anything you say. I hope you know while you sing your heart is also singing while you preach your heart is also preaching the salmon of your heart is greater than that of your lips let the words of my mouth he says and the meditation of my heart